<clears throat> We're live, Mayor Ostrander. Thank you, Tom. It is uh, 6.33 p.m., so I will call this meeting to order. Welcome, everyone, to uh, Brighton Council meeting. Uh, I'll begin with a territorial recognition by recognizing the traditional keepers of this land and specifically our neighbors of the Alderville First Nation with a formal territorial acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that the municipality of Brighton is located on the Mississauga Anishinaabek territory and is the traditional territory of the Mississauga. The Council of the Municipality of Brighton respectfully acknowledges that the Mississauga Nation are the collective stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. I will also advise that due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting will be held using electronic conference technology. Members of council, municipal staff, and our delegation are all engaging in tonight's meeting through video conference. The public is invited to join us by viewing this meeting live on the Municipality of Brighton YouTube channel. And I will also note that once we proceed into closed session, the live YouTube stream will end for the duration of tonight's council meeting. With that, um, I have a motion, which I will explain if I get it on the floor, that council amend the agenda to allow notice of motion 10.2 to be read as a motion on this agenda. Is there a mover? Deputy Mayor Vink. Second. Council Blanc. Uh, I've come to understand that staff have uh, product on hold and are waiting for us to make a decision with regard to a rainbow sidewalk. And if, um, if we were to make the decision to proceed, they'd be uh, able to get it done before the end of Pride Month. So um, if we allow it to come as a motion, I would get staff to speak to that. Uh, if not, we will read it as a motion in the regular meeting in July. So that being said, uh, is there any questions or comments on the motion, which is simply to amend the agenda? There being none. Oh, go ahead, Councilor LeBlanc. So when you talk, your, your mayor, when you're talking about the, uh, the rainbow crosswalk, does that need an amendment for tonight? This is what we're talking about. We're amending the, mo the, we're amending the meeting so that the notice of motion becomes a motion tonight. Okay, thank you. If council agrees in a, a two-thirds majority vote, then then we'll proceed. Any further questions or comments? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. And that's carried. Thank you. So the next motion reads that council approved the June 21st, 2021 council meeting agenda as amended. Okay, mover. Council LeBlanc, seconded by Council Rowley. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? And if so, please state the general nature thereof. There are none noted. Are there any announcements this evening? Council Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would just like to fill people in. I attended the AGM for the Friends of Presqu'ile, and I know I heard this morning, Mary, um, you were talking on uh, Lauren Brooker's show about uh, some people in Brighton not being so happy with having to book ahead of time that kind of thing. And that was discussed at the meeting, but also um, since so much of their programs had to be canceled, they uh, ended up with a 
not a healthy surplus, but over 5,000 because they got a huge uh, donation from, from a, a, man, a resident. But uh, when, when the superintendent spoke, he, he said last year, it, the people that were coming there were using the park like a dump and he said it was disgusting and it took an awful lot of time to clean up all the mess afterwards. There was 40 pounds of garbage. There was even a fridge left behind. And they were using the beach as their uh, washroom. So it was really disgusting. But anyways, on better notes, uh, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know, because we know how important our volunteers are, that Bev Cook, who was the um, chair for 10 years and, and contributed all kinds of things to the Friends of Presque and she does for other organizations too. She resigned and, um, and in the process of when they were talking about who would get the volunteer of the award, she, she got the award and it was well deserved. So uh, they have a new chair named Christine and I'm sorry I didn't get her last name and Doreen Cable as vice. And they're moving forward and they're trying to they're trying to sell uh, their stuff because they can't open their store online so that they're in the process of doing that. And the boardwalk is open and the, the Moby mats at their beach are there for the, for the people who need that kind of accessibility. So I think I've covered most everything, but it was a good meeting and well attended. So, um, and it, everybody at some point it would be uh, a privilege for you to go because you then you get a real eye opener of all the things they do to help children, uh, students, uh, people in all age groups of their lives. So um, I was I was glad to attend again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chairman. I know that the uh, Friends of Presque Isle group is um, is the envy of the provincial park system. Uh, provincial parks, many provincial parks have friends groups. But hardly any are so robust as ours and uh, they do a ton of work you're absolutely right and they do deserve all the kudos uh, for all the work they do so thank you for that thank you for bringing that to us there any other go ahead council oh thanks there was just the two things that i forgot to say their visitors were up last year 150 percent and their camping was up 800 percent and they're booked right through to the fall already now and people are very getting quite angry because they can't get a spot, but there's only so much room. So it's a very busy place over there. And hopefully we won't have the problems that we had with people parking along the causeway and everywhere else and walking in. So I know this isn't popular with the residents in Brighton that they have to book ahead, but uh, maybe they'll be able to tweak it somehow um, so that residents can at least go for a drive through the park, those who wish to. So that's all. Thank you for that. Are there any other announcements? Thank you. We'll move into the adoption of the minutes. The first is that council adopt the June 7th, 2021 council meeting minutes as presented. Is there a mover? Council Rowley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink. Any discussion? Members of council, please unmute yourself. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And that's carried. <clears throat> Thank you. And the next is that Council adopt the June 14th, 2021 Council Planning Meeting Minutes as presented. Is there a move? Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Green. Questions or comments from members of council? Yeah. Councillor Bateman. I, I emailed yourself, I can't remember, maybe perhaps the CAO, just questioning because we deferred the closed session on the bylaw enforcement matters and you explained it and I'm fine with that. But since it was done through resolution, do we have to do anything with that? No. Or we're just allowed to move it? Just a procedural thing. Yeah, I, I um, staff asked me if it would be okay to uh, when I called the special meeting if that particular item was included in the special meeting. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, is there any procedural motion we need passed to get that done? Or can that no. just be in internally? That's right. The clerk has the right to move things if they need to, just because of items for um, the agenda and making things fit. Thank you. Does that satisfy your question, Councillor Bateman? Yeah, I just wasn't sure since it was a resolution it voted on. I just want to make sure in case any, you know, just follow the procedures. That's all. <laughs> I appreciate that. What's Educational. Important is, what's important is that the business will come to council and in, in, as soon as we can get it to council. So that's next Monday. Any further questions? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Um, Mayor, could you please tell me again who second the motion? Councillor LeBlanc. Thank you. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And that's carried. Thank you. We have no statutory public meeting this evening, which takes us into delegations. Council will hear one delegation this evening. It is noted that language, content, and conduct must be remain respectful at all times. Council will be provided with an opportunity to ask questions of clarification from the delegation representatives based on the information that they have presented. Council is reminded that this is not an opportunity to engage in debate with the delegate or advance a public policy position. And I would also note that uh, the delegate does have correspondence on the agenda uh, for our discussion later on as well. So I'll introduce uh, Hannah Haituoglo, and I'll get Hannah to introduce uh, her friend beside her. I don't know who that is. Uh, coming to us on behalf of the student body regarding the East Northumberland Secondary School 2021 graduation proposal. Ms. Haituoglo, you have the floor. Thank you. This is my friend, Kira. Hi She's guys. also helping. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, are you reading the proposal? or So I have a speech here, but it's not the proposal. Do you want me to yeah. read both? You go ahead and, and make your delegation. However, it is you you prepared it there. We won't be reading your correspondence out loud, but council has received your correspondence in our agenda package and is prepared to discuss it this evening. Okay, sounds good. All right. Mr. Mayor and city councilors, I wanna thank you all for listening, for taking your time to listen to our graduation proposal. My name is Hannah Hajoglo and joining me tonight is Kira Trump and in spirit, Jonathan Fairbank and Eva Trump. We are four ambitious, hardworking students who are working tirelessly so that students in our year can have the graduation we deserve. As you all know, this year has been extremely hard on all of us. Us seniors have suffered in unimaginable ways. In a study, it was found that the pandemic has had a negative effect on the mental health of 80% of students. Another study by the CDC stated that 25% of respondents aged 18 to 24 attempted to commit suicide in a 30-day window during the pandemic. Just to put that into perspective, out of us four students planning grad, three of us would have, ne would have negative effects on our mental health and one would have attempted suicide. We as students have had enough and deserve one good moment to celebrate all that we've been through the last two years and all that we've worked so hard for for the past 14 years. After Doug Ford's announcement that high schools can and should have an outdoor graduation, we were all ecstatic. Over 30 graduating students sent an email to our school board trustee about how necessary it is to have a graduation and their willingness to help organize and set up the graduation. The school board decided against it. I was told I'd be fine because I'd have a great university graduation. But what about the kids who don't get to go to university? the ones who can't afford to, the ones who didn't have the grades to get into their program, or the ones who decide to go straight into the workforce. Should they be penalized or have their hard work in high school discredited because they didn't go to university? We don't think so. I was told that an October graduation would allow for all students to be celebrated. What about the students who are writing the midterms the day of the graduation? Yes, our graduation is set for midterms week in October, or students who got a scholarship to a school in the US or another province and simply can't afford to fly home, or the students who are traveling abroad just as I was supposed to. Are we supposed to tell these kids that because of their impressive secondary path, they chose 
they don't get to be celebrated. We are here showing up, putting the work in so that every graduate can celebrate their accomplishments. We have at least 30 students and parents of graduates backing us, willing to put in the work as well. In high school, they try to teach you to be independent, a leader, to work for what you want, and then they expect us to sit down and accept no graduation. We deserve this, we will work for it, and we can do it. We just need the support of the city of Brighton. As outlined in our proposal, all that we ask for is the use of the stage for our event, the mayor to hand out diplomas, and help in planning a prom parade. Our graduation will be COVID safe. The majority of students will be vaccinated. We will be distanced with masks if necessary and following provincial guidelines for gathering sizes. We will be in stage three by the proposed date. If we can go to Canada's Wonderland, I'm sure we can do an outdoor 50 person graduation. <laughs> a high school graduation is an extremely important milestone that everyone deserves to celebrate. I personally know a student at ENSS who is the first male in his family to ever graduate high school. I know students who are failing majority of their classes and didn't see a way that they could possibly graduate. And there are many students who didn't even think they'd be alive to see their graduation day. To have an accomplishment this big diminish to nothing is disappointing, disheartening, and unacceptable to us. We deserve this. Please support us to help make us to help make this happen. I hope you can all see that we are trying to make the best of a poor situation. We understand it may not look like a regular graduation. That's okay. Anything is better than nothing. And we will be sure to take all precautions to make this the safest celebration yet. Thank you for your time and we look forward to your support. Thank you both for that. I'll open the floor to questions of clarification for members of council. Councilor Kevin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the one thing that um, I, I have, I was involved in as someone wanted to have a, a, a parade and uh, I just, I said to them, you know, uh, I certainly would, you know, support you in that, but have you talked to the police because they have to be involved in anything like that. And have you talked to uh, the health unit? This is separate from what you what you're doing. You wouldn't have to. Uh, they don't have to talk. This these people didn't have to talk to the school board, but the sergeant. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his name was. Was is, but he said no. You couldn't have it because of the the people that would gather. So that would be my concern. Have you have you been able to talk to? someone at to the OPP station to get the go ahead. So for prom parade, we haven't reached out to anyone yet just because we kind of wanted to see where this went first and if we had like the support of the city. And we also didn't know the steps quite yet for prom parade um, or who to talk to for that. We have a little bit more planned for graduation and we know the steps a little bit more there, but we are kind of reaching out for someone to help like where to go for prom parade. Um, but we'll reach out to the police um, or sheriff or whoever it is and see what he thinks because uh, it will be in July when gathering sizes are a little bit larger. So maybe we can convince him for that. But if we can't do prom parade, that's okay. We're mostly hoping for the graduation here. Councilor Anderson. Um, yeah, I heard three things there. A prom parade, but you're saying that's not priority. Uh, graduation is priority. How about the prom? <laughs> so we have a friend who's looking at throwing a prom in her backyard, but mm. it'll be later <laughs> in uh, later in August when gathering sizes are. We're imagining fifty to one hundred people, but no matter what it is, it will follow the the guidelines and if it's not 50 i believe that she's just scrapping the prom like not gonna do it i think that might be the one item that you out of the three you've eliminated the parade possibly but the uh, that would be one item that might be your largest challenge uh, controlling yeah. or ensuring that that what you're saying is you're going to make it happen uh, 
the right way, but I think that one might be out of your control at some so, point. I think so. what she's trying to do is right now she's trying to kind of plan it as more of a private event and see where that goes. Um, but like, she doesn't really have a lot to um, go off of guidelines wise at the moment. So she's just kind of taking a step back until she sees what's going to happen. Um, but uh, that's kind of, I guess that's her job. She's going to be taking care of that. So we're not really worried about that. Our big thing is the graduation. So, yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you, you, uh, you've requested that you go in the Memorial Park, at the, the bandstand. Have you thought of other places? Because that's a, a extremely a, a congested area uh, and... Uh, just thinking in my head, uh, would you consider another place? I, a beautiful place is down where the Rotary Gardens are. Um, maybe you wouldn't have the cover uh, the same as, as at the park, but um, you'd certainly have a lot more space and you wouldn't be interfering with the traffic that goes along that street and Main Street. Yeah, for sure. We definitely contemplated different areas, like even just the sports field um, at King Edward Park, because there's lots of room there. But we kind of wanted the stage in specific because it's a stage and you get that feeling of walking across that the stage, which is the big feeling that we're looking for on graduation. If need be, if we couldn't um, have the graduate graduation there, we can definitely move it. Um, but our plan is to have separate ceremonies with only about 40 or 50 graduates. Oh, and I think if, uh, if council does decide to support the correspondence later on in the agenda, what I think we would be wise to do would be refer the entire item to staff, uh, who would then engage with um, the, the little committee here to come up with a plan. Um, I don't think it would be wise of us to try to uh, um, figure that out tonight. We'd let staff do that. Um, they know what resources we have available and uh, can work with uh, Hannah and, and Kieran and their friends to, to get that done if, if we choose to go down that road. Councilor Tadman. Thank you once again, Mayor. Uh, there is a stage. Do we still own the stage that we use for Apple Fest? Maybe uh, Laura, I think Laura's on Apple Fest and Emily. Do we still have that stage? Deputy Mayor? Um, I believe we do. I, it was, is Jim here? He would be able to answer whether or not we have that stage. There's Jim. Mr. Miller? That stage. We do have a uh, stage in the community, uh, community center. Um, that's pretty much what we have. Um, as so, far as door use goes, I mean, I myself, I, I like the stage idea at Memorial Park. Any other questions of clarification on the delegation? This is just the delegation. We're not going to prosecute the, the letter. Um, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. So just a question for Hannah and Kira. I, I commend you for trying to get this off the ground. I know it's very difficult. Um, of course, I think we can help. We, we would love to help if we can. Um, we also, also have to make sure we follow the rules. So uh, I just want to make sure what your priority is. Your priority is a graduation and you're just looking for a place to do that. And you're hoping that it can be in the park with the band stand or the band shell. Any, anything else is that kind of, because we're going to discuss it later. I want to make sure I have an idea of what you guys really need. So our two biggest needs I'd say is one, the stage. And then number two, someone to hand us our diplomas because we're, we don't think that the school is allowed to be involved due to the board. So we were hoping that the mayor could hand us our diplomas. Um, but th yeah, those are the two big yeah. things we need. Um, equipment wise, like the stage, obviously the big thing, but we have like um, a projector and a projector screen. We're hoping to do like a PowerPoint or something and have like, pictures of the graduates potentially if that works out. Um, I have speakers as well that we can use already. We've got microphones and stuff as well. Um, so we've really, I think we can cover a lot of the planning. It's just the place is the big thing. Okay, thank you. Councilor LeBlanc. Thank you, Mayor. 
I like hearing from our residents and our future young leaders that want to take action and do this. And if Councillor Tadman was worried about traffic, I think that uh, Mr. Preston, the director, the director of Roads and Grounds, has the right to close off that street for a short period of time and make a small detour for this to take place. And uh, it was a heartwarming speech that she gave. My question is, is the graduation, I think it's it, something should take place uh, for them. And a few years ago, we did have a parade, the last one that we just went through, and there was social distancing that took place and the citizens did very well. So the citizens of Brighton know how to behave. And it's nice to hear from future young leaders that are coming up. And thank you for your, your presentation. That's all I gotta say. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the book. And just for the record, we did have a graduation parade in Brighton last year. Yes. Uh, during during COVID-19. Um, and we arranged it with our fire department and the OPP and everyone managed to uh, get along fine and uh, there were no there were no uh, public health concerns. So I, I don't think it's terribly problematic, but we should probably wait until we're in, you know, stage two or three before we endeavor to go or step step two or three before we endeavor to go down that road. I guess maybe one thing, sorry to interrupt, um, would be contacts with the sheriff or the fire department so that um, if you could put us in contact with someone that we could reach out to, um, that could be another thing, I guess. I see I see fire chief uh, Jim Smith with his thumb up. So he'll, uh, he'll I'm sure be in touch with you through the clerk's office um, and, and will help coordinate with other emergency services. And I love that you think we have a sheriff. I think that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know. We're not, I don't know. <laughs> We're just okay. going with it. <laughs> That's for Anderson. Yeah, you just, you mentioned uh, another thing that uh, these group, these would be in smaller groups. Uh, you said 40. So the graduations I've seen, and I've seen two of them, <laughs> uh, from not my own. Uh, I'm talking about if you did it, if you broke it down into groups of 40 or whatever the respectable number would be, does that mean you have separate nights, you have separate times, you have separate, how would you, how would you do that? So we so were I, looking at- I think, hang, hang on just for a second. I think um, we would let staff and the, the committee work that out, Councillor Anderson, but I'll let, I will let the, the team- Well, it's important to know that. that. What their thoughts are so we can have that open more open conversation during correspondence. Go ahead, um, Ms. Haituaglo or Ms. Trump. So we were looking at doing, uh, we're guessing about three different ceremonies. Um, we don't imagine that every graduate will sign up, although we want to open up to every graduate at ENSS. Um, and we want to do it on the same day. So we're thinking about our ceremonies with about an hour in between to be able to get those graduates out and the next graduates in. Um, we had ever we were going to have everyone bring their own chairs so that there's no um, having like no having contamination yeah. and contamination. Um, and then people would be able to sign up for which session they wanted so they could still graduate with their friends but we can still keep the sessions small. So same day, different times for the graduations. As long as the mayor doesn't get tired, that'd be all right. <laughs> yeah. I can, I, I have can, a deputy mayor. I can call in reinforcements, Councilor. <laughs> <laughs> um, Councilor Tadman, you had your hand up. No. Thank you. Anyone else? With the motion before me reads that council receives a delegation from Hannah Haituoglu on behalf of the student body of ENSS regarding 2021 graduation proposal. Is there a mover? Councilor Rowley, is there a seconder? Deputy Mayor Vink. Uh, any further discussion? Before I call the vote, um, we will read your, this is just to receive your delegation. We will read your correspondence later in the agenda and discuss uh, next steps or if, if we're willing to support at that time. And you're certainly welcome to stay on the line for that. Or um, if you wish, you can leave and, and uh, monitor us on YouTube as well, whichever you prefer. Sounds good. Thank uh, you. Well, one more time. You're welcome. And thank you for your delegation. Just one more time. Is there any discussion on the motion? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. 
Councilor Mary Tagman. Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Madam Clerk, are you aware of anyone joining us for citizens' comment this evening? No, I'm not. Thank you. So that takes us into staff reports. Sorry, my iPad's uh, here. There we go. takes us into staff reports. The first report is the finance department revision of annual budget policy. Ms. Whittefield, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. Thank you. The motion before me reads that council received a staff report regarding annual budget policy revision and further the council approves the revision of the annual budget policy. Is there a mover? Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Is there any discussion? Councilor LeBlanc. Is, can I ask some questions to uh, the uh, Minister of Finance? Then not the Minister, our, our Director of Finance. You can ask a question to the Director, yes. <laughs> yes. When I was looking the, at, your, at your review, when I get to the uh, one on the reserves, the reserves for, um, for sidewalks, there's about sixty thousand dollars left in reserves. When we did our budget, I thought we had nine hundred and eighty thousand, and we were going to spend three hundred thousand on fixing the resort, uh, the um, uh, fixing the sidewalks, which would leave about three hundred thousand left in reserves. I think you're ahead of yourself, Councilor Okay, I'm ahead of myself. Next one. Yeah, I think okay. that's the next report. Yeah. yeah. We'll just we'll yeah. just we'll just park your question and come back to you in the next report. Any okay, uh, questions you. or comments with regard to the annual budget policy? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And that's carried. Thank you. Our next report is also from the Finance Department 2022 pre budget report. Uh, Ms. Whitfield, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. I wish to preempt Councillor LeBlanc's question with an answer. Sure. There, <laughs> well, hang on. I'm going to move her in a second or we'll get number four and then we'll get to the answer. It must be my second COVID shot I got today. So <laughs> And moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. And uh, I think you've already asked your question, Councillor LeBlanc. I have so another I'll, one after that one. Very well, I'll turn the floor over to Director Whittefield to reply. Okay, so the sidewalks were being funded in our budget um, by the um, um, contingency reserve. Um, or no, sorry, gas tax, federal gas tax reserve um, for those projects that we had underway um, for the, the maintenance of the sidewalk. So you were asking about a sidewalk reserve and it is a small one and that was made up partially from um, Edgewater Drive and partially from another project and I, off the top of my head, I can't think of what it was. So that, that's not the funds that we set aside for the sidewalk projects. Okay. Thank you. So there's still a large reserve for sidewalks repairs in another reserve. The sidewalk repairs were being done with our federal gas tax reserve. So is, that's not an endless supply of sidewalk money per se, but it is what's funding the current sidewalk maintenance program. Okay. One more question if I could, Mayor. You may. Um, when it came, when I got on council, we talked about brushing and ditching. And at that time, I went through my notes after I read this, there was 980,000 in ditching and brushing when I got onto council in 2019, and when we did our first budgeting. So I went back through, I went through that budget and I saw it there. But now you're saying, when I look at the reserves for ditching and brushing in the rural area, it's a lot smaller than that amount. 
was that reserve, where did it, the reserve, did we use it all? We spent 120,000 the first year, then we only spent 60. Then we bought the, the, um, the decided to start doing it by ourselves. So has the reserve been used up, depleted that much? Um, there wasn't a specific, uh, through you, Mayor, sorry. Yep. Um, there wasn't a specific reserve for brushing and ditching. Um, some of the brushing and ditching was taking place through um, our contingency reserve, as you'll recall, um, because some of the, the work that had not been done in prior years through surplus and policy went to our contingency reserve. So we were funding some of it that way. Um, in addition, any of the road projects that we do in the rural area, we're, we're adding the brushing and ditching into those projects. So we're doing them as we do the roads as well. And finally, um, we did buy the uh, rubber tire excavator and are starting to do more and more of the um, brushing and ditching projects in house. And perhaps the director of public works could speak more to that program. Parkinson? Through your worship. Uh, yes, so now we do all the brushing in house and the bulk of our ditching. Uh, we try to keep in house and use our equipment and excavators to do that work. Thank you. Any other questions on the motion from members of council? Councilor Rowley. Thank you. Just uh, one question as I read um, the development charges uh, graph that you have here, Linda. Uh, $48,000 taking out of the grade separation uh, reserve. What would we have done with that? You're on mute, Linda. Sorry, my apologies through you, Mayor. Um, we borrow internally sometimes in the development charges if we haven't raised enough in any particular um, area, like for example, uh, paying for a DC study and maybe we didn't have all of the development charges money in, under general government at that time, we borrowed internally. We had to borrow internally for uh, some of our road projects and then we repay it. So I keep track of all of that. You'll see little red triangles. Those are comments that I make in the cells for my own benefit. Um, and then we can repay them over time. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Any further questions on the motion? The council, if we pass this motion, we will be anticipating the staff will be bringing forward a, a budget for us to consider um, with the guidelines that you see before you. I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson and seconded by Councillor Bateman. If there's nothing further. Madam Clerk, please call on the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? No. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Uh, I will say yes if I'm allowed to make a comment that uh, this is so preliminary. And I always believe that uh, there's negotiation that can go on all through the budget deliberation. And I think we should cut our cord, our cloth accordingly, since there is people in this municipality who are suffering. And um, uh, those who work for the municipality haven't suffered at all as far as uh, getting their pay and their benefits and everything else. So I think there's room to maneuver here. And thank you, Linda, for all the information here. And I'll say yes at this point, but that doesn't mean I would agree at the end. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. And that's carried. Thank you. Next report is from the clerk's office. Ontario launches consultation to strengthen municipal codes of conduct. Madam Clerk, we've read the report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. Motion reads that council received the staff report regarding Ontario Lodge's consultation to strengthen municipal codes of conduct as information. And I'll take a mover in a seconder, but I think we need a little more information here um, 
or maybe we don't. Maybe you're, you're fine with it as is, or maybe you'd like uh, through the clerk's office that we submit some information to the to the ministry. So is there a mover? Councilor Cadman, seconded by Council LeBlanc. And I'll open the floor for discussion. Councilor Bateman. Is it safe to assume, Mayor, that uh, I think they said the survey goes until mid-July, so after that's all done in the province or whoever is compiles all this, it's something I'll come back, yep. obviously, with whatever changes or recommendations or whatever they say? Yeah, it, it sounds to me like the province of Ontario intends to put something into legislation that's going okay. to um, that's what force, I assume. Down, force it down a road with regard to codes of conduct. So that's why the, the broad consultation um, right now, it's open for individual members to make comment if we want, but there is an opportunity for us as a council through this motion, if we wanted to say anything um, collectively, now would be the opportunity. Uh, but if we're fine with it as is, and just to make our, our individual comments, I just asked for this to be on the agenda so that if we wanted to make a collective comment, we could. All right, thank you. Deputy Mayor. Um, I think uh, maybe worth a discussion. Um, uh, we, we've seen different uh, levels of this code of conduct being used, and uh, and sometimes it's used in a way that's you know seems somewhat malicious in the past. And uh, we want a, a good code of conduct that uh, um, certainly uh, keeps members of councils in line, or or, or we know where the line is. Um, and uh, there's some. Uh, th there's, there's some things that maybe we, we should discuss or come back and discuss about this. I don't, I don't know uh, whether council wants to or not, but certainly um, we certainly need rules. Uh, but we also, um, when, sometimes when, um, when we have these rules, they can be abused as well. So I don't know if there's a solution to that. I, th I think some members of council know what I'm talking about when I'm saying all of this. And uh, uh, I believe uh, if you want to make a complaint to the integrity commissioner, I think it, it's done um, with anonymity, which is good for perhaps our members of our community, but I'm not sure if it's good for members of council to be to remain anonymous because that kind of that will bring it out in the open clearly that a member of council is, is lodging a, a complaint against another member of council. Anyway, I, I'm just kind of throwing some things out there, ideas. Um, would love to hear what the rest of the council has to say about this. I think it's good that we have some sort of discussion about it. Councilor Tadney. You muted, Mary. Sorry, <clears throat> thank you, um, Deputy Mayor, because this has been on my mind for a long time. And it is true, and I am a prime example of somebody not being happy with what I spoke from my heart. And uh, I, the other counselor that was taken to the integrity commissioner can speak for himself. But we got a notice the week of Christmas to say that that some this couple had filed and went to the integrity commissioner. Uh, I, when the other counselor phoned me, he was in a panic. I said, well, calm down till I go and listen to the, the meeting. And when I listened to it, it, I said, we have said nothing wrong. We've asked some questions, pertinent questions, but that's how it's used to, you know, get back at somebody because uh, they aren't happy with what uh, the decision or even a comment is made that's made in innocence. And so it costs the taxpayers money because they, the integrity commissioner doesn't do this for free. And so all over Christmas and into a couple of weeks into January, and then we got a report that they had dro dropped it because there was nothing there that they needed to investigate. So um, it's not a pleasant thing to know because I, I, I can only speak for myself. I, I try my very best to always have good integrity, have all my life. And then to be taken to an, an integrity commissioner is the slap in the face. And I don't know if any of you have been, probably not. But in this situation, I know that there was more than this couple 
just by the way I read it. So I'm not pointing fingers at this point, but I certainly would if I needed to. And uh, so that's my complaint. It And it happened, and Laura, you know it because you were on council last time. It was used sometimes just to, sometimes out of jealousy, sometimes just out of vengeance. And it costs the taxpayers a lot of money for nothing. And uh, that's the part that I have problems with. And I don't know how the Ontario government's going to fix that. Any other questions from members of council, comments? Councilor LeBlanc? You're muted, Doug. So you, Mayor. Um, I take great heart to uh, Mary Tasman's comment. I was that other counselor, so I'll tell her. I don't panic very often, but that, when I'm having my supper, I get served with an email. But anyway, here or there, I think the broader comment of this for all of Ontario doesn't really apply to this council because some councils out there, if you listen to what's going on, is really, really, really bad. You can look what they had to do with the Toronto Council, they had to cut it in half because they, were, they weren't effective. They had to get the smaller numbers. And the fighting of using it as a weapon, I don't think this council does that, 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 that would do that. From the people that, I, that I'm on council with, I can't see that happening. But I can understand the general rule that they have to pass a rule and a regulation and paint a wide brush on everybody. And it's not fun to find out uh, somebody's going to weaponize something against you. But anyway, those are the rules. Those are the rules we got to live by, and those are the rules that we got elected by. So I'm prepared to stand by. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? So at this stage, are we comfortable simply receiving it for information? And if we want to add uh, anything of our own to the uh, to the notice board through the ministry, we, we can do that as individual members of this council. That's the case. So I'll ask members of council to unmute yourselves and Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Councillor Ron Anderson. Uh, yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. And I found it an honor to be brought there with Mary to Councillor Tadman and my vote is yes. Pardon? My vote is yes. Thank you. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes, I'll be speaking to this group of people. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. That takes us into notices of motion. motions. And the first one is a motion that came forward as a notice on May 3rd. Uh, however, the motion before me reads that council defer the motion until information has been received from the municipal solicitor, the integrity commissioner, and the ombudsman's office. The remover. Council LeBlanc, seconded by Council Rowley. Any questions or comments from members of the council? the motion to defer so we shouldn't actually have uh, any debate on this so madam clerk go ahead madam clerk i apologize for that the um the i compass system picked up the wrong uh motion that was the motion that was already passed we did a report that came forward this was supposed to be for the notice of motion that came forward the resolution sheet uh it picked up the we, wrong one we have already received this information then. right uh, Councilor LeBlanc, Councilor Rowley, can I get you to withdraw this motion? And I will read the motion that's a bit in front of us on the agenda. Getting nods of heads, so I'm writing withdrawn upon this motion. And...
Mayor, yes. the um, the actual notice of motion is in the agenda. So it is there. It's just it didn't come out on our sheets. I'm just writing a, uh, a motion here. That's the, the shortened version at the bottom. Yeah. So this is uh, coming from the notice of motion that was dated May 3rd, and it's moved by Council of Long, seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink to Council amend policy AD 690, audio recording of council meetings by revoking recording of closed session meetings. Any discussion? Councillor Anderson? Um, could I hear from one of the two councillors? Oh, oh where are they wanting this to go? Um, the question is, why do we not believe recording of closed session is prudent? I, I still not, haven't heard the answer on that exactly. Councilor LeBlanc? Uh, to Councilor Ron Anderson, uh, the reason I put this motion in, in talking with our clerk, um, the, the motion for audioing was brought in by the past council to audio our in closed door meetings. And then in our closed door meetings, we want councillors to be free to have a, a, a debate, a sort of good debate so that it doesn't have to be recorded. But we ask for legal, we ask for opinions. So our basically our integrity commissioner said, no, we shouldn't record. Our legal department, uh, a council who's also an integrity commissioner said, yes, we should record. Our, the embodiment said, we should record, but if anybody wants to find out anything that's said in, the, in a closed door meeting that should be private, they can get it through open. But the question is to ask to the clerk, is it acceptable in a court of law? But other lawyers could use it as a, a bargaining chip, an arguing point, because we're just expressing opinions to come up as a group of seven with a decision. It's not a decision of an individual. It's an individual, it's a, it's a decision of a group of seven. So if one individual is over here and the other six are over there, if somebody didn't like the decision, they would get the closed door meeting and they would bring that individual counselor and say, why didn't you fight far, hard enough? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why don't you try to convince the other six, but it's a decision of council. So the reason the motion was brought in, is it something that should be there or shouldn't be there? But the two decisions we have, the three, two says we should, one said we shouldn't, but maybe the clerk can answer, is it, is it acceptable in a court of law what we do in close? So maybe she can answer that question for you. Okay. Madam Clerk, here to venture down that road. Well, I'm not, um, I'm not a legal uh, solicitor or anything like that. Um, so I really don't have much of a comment except for the fact that I don't think from what I've read in other studies and stuff that um, the audio recordings will not be used in a court of law. But what it does is that it helps the investigation for the, um, like our commissioner, uh, integrity commissioner, anybody who does closed meeting investigations, I believe that they think, some people think that it's a useful tool. Um, others say that, like you said, Doug, it can work against you as well. So, I mean, those are the opinions that we've received and it's up to council what they want to do. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. And uh, I second this because I just wanted us to have the conversation. It's come up many times over the years and I want us to have the conversation. We did get the opinions. It's funny to me that we received some no's and some yeses. I am curious if I could ask the, the clerk um, uh, what other municipalities do in our area? Are, are we the only ones who are recording or is what is the norm? So out of the seven municipalities, I believe we're the only ones that do audio recording of our closed session. Um, there are other municipalities that do and have asked me, have sent uh, other clerks have asked me about our policy. Um, our, our policy um, actually does need to be revamped. It doesn't really have a lot of teeth in it. So that's something that we need to look at as well. If we decide to go down this road some more, 
Um, but uh, there are quite a few other larger municipalities that do the audio um, recording and they call them in-camera sessions. Um, but the smaller municipalities don't record their closed sessions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Councilor Bateman. Thank you, Mayor. I've gone back and forth on this since I first saw it because I could see the argument from both sides. And you know, since 2018, when we were all sworn in, we've heard multiple times, and rightfully so, that you know, depending on the topic, you know, listen to the experts, whether it's you know, staff, a director of this, a director of that, and we've heard from our legal expert. And so I have a tough time, you know, saying, yeah, okay, we asked our legal expert, we're going to listen to him sometimes, not other times. So I'm personally leaning towards listening to, you know, not only our solicitor, but he happens to also be, you know, an integrity commissioner for another county. So I'd have a hard time, you know, sloughing off the expert opinion. So. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Uh, I agree. We got to listen to our experts. Um, the uh, it does keep us on our toes too, uh, if it is recorded. At the same time, we are talking about sometimes individuals, we're talking about people's livelihoods, about their residences, about their, all kinds of information out there. And how accessible is it to anybody that wants to get information for whatever reason they want it? How easy is it for them to get that copy of that? It might be totally out of our control. So I'll Madam, ask I'll ask Candace that question. Yeah. Madam Clerk, how secure is the recorded uh, closed session? So the closed session is um, the, it's secure by me. Um, I'm the only one that has access to those. Or sorry, uh, Tom as well have access to those recordings. Um, but to say that somebody couldn't try to subpoena those audio recordings. That could be out of our hands if if it comes down to the um, down to the courts. So at least it has to be by subpoena or by court order. Or right. It's not just somebody wanting to find out what so and so is doing or what they're talking about because I want to get a lead on something. You know, like it's yeah, it's just like closed session minutes. Those okay. are not available. So with that backing up to Councillor Bateman, I don't think we really have anything to hide in the result of, uh, unless there's a certain case of uh, wrongdoing somewhere that anybody should be worried about. But anyhow, I, I think the lawyer is looking at it that way. I'll let somebody else. Thank you, Councilor Cadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't even know if you were on council at the time, but I would, uh, I remember, I think you were, there was a certain counselor that happened to be quite a bully. And uh, I was called names that were not acceptable in camera. And I basically said, well, I'm not gonna sit here and listen to this anymore. And I will be talking to legal. And he quickly told me, oh, get out of here, baby. So that can go on too. And so it's, it's nice to have recording and I fully support all in cameras to be, to be recorded because of those kind of things that can happen. Thank you for that. Councillor Bateman. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to add and clarify my position. It's, it's not just in respect to our solicitor and you know him being an integrity commissioner. And I know we're not around the horseshoe, but I'd like to say horseshoe because it's just, this is getting old doing this on Zoom. So, okay, one last time, hopefully we'll be in the, around the, the window here, whatever we call it. I have faith in the people, like we don't always agree on the different topics and the different things that come up on agenda. We're always gonna have differences of opinion, but I trust that there's nothing going to be said in a closed session in a derogatory fashion. I guess to sum it up, I, I believe that everybody that's sitting here is going to be, so that doesn't scare me. And I think everybody that is on council and the staff are gonna be professional in closed sessions. So that's that's why I have no worries or qualms with it being recorded. The, the bigger issue is, is when we have closed sessions that they stay enclosed. What we say enclosed, I think everybody's gonna be professional inside that room or on these Zoom. So 
that aspect of it doesn't worry me. I rely on the professionalism sitting around this uh, Zoom chat. Thank you for that, Councilor Bateman. Councilor Rowling. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a question for the park again. Uh, and as you mentioned, that maybe uh, our policy is a little thin and that we should re review the whole policy around closed sessions. Is that, did I understand you to say that? Is this something? Go ahead. Around the audio recordings of closed sessions or actually of all of our, um, I refer a records management standpoint, we, we need to relook at um, how long we keep these recordings for um, and just uh, just tidy up the, the policy a little bit. That's all. So regardless of which way council decides to either re keep the recordings or not to record, will that make a difference as to how you move forward with the policy? Or should we review all of that then? No, it's just for the audio recordings of the closed session. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, just to be clear, our integrity commissioner is a professional as well. So we're getting two different opinions from two different professionals. So I, I think it's a matter of what we prefer. And the last term of council, we started off not recording and then it was brought forward that we would record. And now we're talking about not recording. You know, you know, at the end of the day, it's what we want. And I don't think it's about hiding anything or anything like that. It's about what's the right way to go about having these, these closed meetings. And I think that's, that's what we need to determine. And at the end of the day, the majority of council will determine that because we obviously have received um, both opinions um, on opposite sides, so. Thank you for that. Um, um, the deputy clerk had a hand up, so I'm gonna ask Mr. Street, um, I know you've lowered your hand, but maybe you still have a comment to make, please. Thanks, Mayor Ostrander. Um, I just wanted to add one more thought just for council's consideration on that. Um, just from an information management standpoint, um, there is a risk just by the fact of creating the records um, that, you know, if there was a hack in our, our system, um, there's also just inadvertent um, disclosure, like by accident, um, just for poor record keeping practices. So I just, I just wanted to sort of put that out there as one other consideration for, for not creating that record, just so that it, couldn't that confidential information could not be released in it. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilor LeBlanc. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm glad that the, the, the Deputy Mayor uh, co-signed this or seconded this with me so we can get into this wholesome debate about recording and close or not. And in, in, in the, so when Tom, the Deputy Mayor, the Deputy Clerk talked, he, he gave me a question. Is there a time limit or can council put a time limit on how long they can keep these closed door records or can they be set up, kept on something sacred that can't be hacked in, not in the general thing? So can they be kept for a year or do they have to be kept for a certain period of time? Madam Clerk? We do have a policy um, in place for how long we keep it. Um, if you just give me a second, I can just find that very quickly for you. Um, Madam Clerk, is it possible that you could just let me know? Mm -hmm. I can. Yes, I can send it to you by email. But I believe that we had it written that we would keep the recorded, the audio recordings at one time they had mentioned to keep it as a, for a lifetime. Um, so that would be something that we would have to um, uh, put on to a separate mechanism, uh, download them. And um, I think we've done that in the past, but we haven't done it in quite some time. So right now we have them all stored on our, um, our hard drive, on our network. 
Thank you. Uh, uh, can I finish my comment, uh, Mayor, sure. please? What it is, since I've been a member of council, all our closed door, I've only known recorded closed door meetings. So the reason I brought this motion forward, there was a debate before there wasn't, some don't. And so I wanted a debate as a, as a decision of council as a whole and using our stuff, whether we would or we wouldn't. And if they, we did, probably the closed door meeting should be kept for a term of council while the council is in that four year term, then be gone. Or one of the things to be brought in, I don't know about a lifetime, but uh, since we have two against three, I'm, I'm in favor now of, of recording because that's all I've known as a counselor is a, clothing, uh, a recording closed door meeting. So that's where I am at now. And I really appreciate this debate and all the work that the clerk and the deputy clerk have done in doing all this research and all this data with all our, um, our solicitors and the um, integrity commissioner and the uh, ombudsman. I thank her very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments from members of council? Before I call the vote, I'll just chime in and say that I am in favor of continuing to record closed session meetings. I think it adds a, a level of accountability um, for us and on our behalf and also helps protect us uh, if we ever get into uh, that discussion of what was said in camera and if there's ever an investigation uh, with regard to a closed meeting matter. So I'll be voting against uh, the motion to revoke um, because I think we should uh, continue to keep it. If there's no further questions or comments. Uh, I'll get members of council to unmute yourselves. And Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Also, Ron Anderson. So the motion to revoke? That's yes. correct. So if you want to no. keep them. Sorry, yeah. no, I don't want it to, uh, to change. Thank you. Councillor Mark Bateman? No. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? No. Councillor Emily Rowley? No. Councillor Mary Tadman? Mayor, just to be uh, absolutely positive, read the motion again for me, please. The Council amend policy AD 690 audio recordings of council meetings by revoking recording of closed session meetings. No, I, I want to stay with recording. Okay. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? No. Mayor Brian Ostrander? No. That's carried. No, Madam Clerk, it's defeated. That's, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was defeated. To be clear. Sorry. Not, no. So that. So, Sorry, so that, yes. So that means we keep on recording, right? Correct. Right. Thank you. Yeah. The, 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 the vote was essentially to do nothing. We carry on the way we have always been doing business. I do not mind losing my motion on this one. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. For All right, thank, thank you both. We move on to motion uh, from June 7th, 2021, where is there's a shortage of affordable housing and attainable housing options in the municipality of Brighton. And whereas, sorry, this is moved by Councillor Anderson and seconded by Councillor Bateman. Whereas there is a shortage of affordable housing and attainable housing options in the municipality of Brighton, and whereas affordable housing and attainable housing strategies are identified as strategic priority in the municipality of Brighton, and whereas needs for housing options is hereby, identif is hereby identified in serving independent and assisted living for seniors and persons with disabilities, and whereas the province of Ontario has encouraged land use planning policies that will help create affordable housing options. Now, therefore, be it resolved that council direct staff to make amendment to land use planning policies, plans and bylaws that will permit the construction of additional or second dwellings on appropriate residential lands in the municipality of Brighton. Uh, I wanna thank councillors Anderson and Bateman for bringing this forward. This concept, um, at least in part, came out of some discussions I've been having with an organization uh, that we're all familiar with in the community called Sunny Days and um, the, the parents of Sunny Days who have concerns with uh, affordable housing options for their, um, for their, for their adult children. Um, uh, Councilor Anderson, you've moved this. Do you have anything uh, you'd like to say with regard to your motion? Go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I think uh, Council will be too. Uh, the uh, this week, this past week, uh, I was able to attend the uh, 
county council meeting and they talked about the, with the national housing strategy and that uh, this type of thing uh, where there's going to be some funding available, you can apply for it. You can, you, if you meet the criteria and this, this, this uh, motion and will help to ensure that you'll be able to add a, a secondary uh, pro, uh, building or, or an addition on your home or for someone within the family or someone who will qualify uh, for, for there's loan availabilities. There's a, uh, certain things you're going to hear all about it i know our staff were uh, informed about this a little while ago and count and north Armand county passed this so it all ties into this and it afford it helps with the affordable housing situation maybe in a small way but it gets us going do you have any further discussion deputy mayor uh, thank you. I'm all for this sort of initiative. I do, uh, I do want to actually hear from staff about uh, the, um, the feasibility of this before we decide to just uh, direct staff to do this. Um, I want to make sure we're ticking all the boxes and we understand what it is that we're asking um, and that there's no um, you know, when we're talking about having two houses on one property, are they allowed to have another driveway? Are they like, are we, are we running, going to run into issues? I want to make sure that we've covered all those bases before we make a decision like this. Sure, I'll, I'll turn the floor over to uh, Mr. Walsh for comment, but just so everyone knows, I did pass the motion by uh, the Director of Planning and Development before asking for a mover and seconder. I wanted his opinion on that before we brought it mm -hmm. forward. But Director Walsh, would you please make comment? Uh, sure, Mayor, uh, to Council. Uh, I'm familiar with the second home um, type policies and provisions in a zoning bylaw. I've gone through that policy review cycle. So yes, I feel very comfortable in, in going forward in response to the, the motion of council. So yeah, it's something I would encourage. And there is some existing wording in the zoning bylaw that alludes to it, but I could use some, some, um, some revisions and some ex expansion and, and some clarity. So yeah, I would welcome the motion of council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. And I think you'll recall that it was probably two councils ago and I, I've been racking my brain trying to think of the, um, I believe he was Reva Vaughn, but he, he uh, started to form a committee and the, the former mayor and I both sat on that committee and there was a lot of work done um, at that time and uh, the county was on board way back then so I'm really pleased that now after they did so many surveys they found out how many people were sort of sleeping from couch to couch and and um, not knowing where their next meal or bed was all that kind of stuff and they had all the the county had all those statistics so it's good now to see that uh, the province also agrees that there's a real need and so hopefully we can move forward with this. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad this is happening. Thank you. Any further questions or comments from members of council? Councilor Bateman. I agree obviously with everything everybody has said. I think we all can agree that there's a huge need, not just in our municipality, but all's, all municipalities. But that being said, this is just one cog in the wheel. There's other organizations and other groups that have different reasons for wanting this, whether it's people with disabilities or people in the early stages of dementia that want some sort of independent living. So this is a good first step. And I look forward to seeing this and others come forward. Thank you, sir. Anything further from members of council? Councilor LeBlanc. Through you, Chair, for the uh, Director of Planning. This motion, would it also help for um, development in the rural areas to using uh, single driveways for doing um, more lots or seniors homes. That's one of the smaller homes in place. Thinking of Golden Pond. Mr. Walsh, you're muted, sir. Thank you. Uh, through the Mayor Council, the, yeah, this will help uh, the rural areas to some extent. Um, I'm thinking second homes and operating farms is a common thing and something that has historically uh, been uh, practiced and uh, and something that could in perhaps should be encouraged and uh, in Golden Pond they uh, we are in currently in consultations with uh, landowner to 
see uh, an official plan amendment and zoning by amendment for a very major expansion. So in that sense, it, uh, this won't help them in particular. They have grander plans than, uh, than that. Um, there's uh, very commonly rural areas as well as uh, something that's been accommodated through uh, temporary use bylaws under uh, I think section 37-ish in the Planning Act for what is called granny flats or garden suites. So I think uh, the, the opportunity to have a second home in lieu of something that's meant to be historically temporary, that my experience never really ends up being too temporary. I think uh, that will also be helpful. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I really hope that uh, we can um, really put our thinking caps on and do, we are we have a, a quite a senior population here in Brighton and people get to the point where they they can't necessarily do the outside work, but they still want to be in their own place. And what I've talked to at, on Golden Pond, those people would really like to, because if you've lived in the rural all your life, you don't want to move necessarily into something like Applefest or whatever. But if you could have your own home uh, in, in such a place as, as on Go Golden Pond, then those people would, they'd live out the rest of their life in, in the area they would like to be. And I have uh, one person in, for, in mind who is at Golden Pond but, and likes it there, but she would like to just have her own place so that she can be, she likes to be on her own. And I, I think we should work hard to be able to help the people in the rural area. We're getting uh, the retirement home in town. We have Apple Fest. We have other places where people can go for assisted living, but uh, I think we can help the rural people better than what we are doing now. Anything further for members of council? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Which brings us to the first notice of motion. It's moved or will be moved by Councilor Bateman, seconded by Councilor Rowley. Whereas the municipality of Brighton has expressed interest in acquiring the crown lands known as Brighton Provincial Wildlife Area. And whereas the Council of the Municipality of Brighton has created a Trails and Cycling Path Advisory Committee. And whereas the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry has worked to make the BPWA available for non motorized trail use. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Council directs staff to discuss the acquisition of the BPWA with MNRF. And that will come forward as a motion uh, at our July meeting. Um, which takes us to 10.4. And I made a mistake when we opened our meeting and I, I asked for 10.2 to be a motion, but it's actually 10.4 uh, that we have paint on hold for, not 10.2, which has nothing to do with painting it. So um, I'm gonna ask for a motion that item 10.4 be read as a motion on tonight's agenda. So our mover, Councilor Bateman, seconded by Councilor Rowley. Any discussion? Clerk, please call the vote. Excuse me, Mayor. Yep. Are you counting the vote already on this motion? No, it's so, the motion. I'm, I'm just asking for a motion that we make the notice of motion a motion. Oh, so okay. Yeah, okay. Right in error, ask for 10.2 to be made a motion. It was already a motion yeah. and it should have been 10.4. I just want it to be clear in the minutes that we've, we've done the procedurally the correct thing. Even Thank if you. it's our order. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. You're muted, Candace. Councilor Ron Anderson. Good that this is recorded, yes. Councilor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley. Yes. 
Councillor Mary Tedman. Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you. So that takes us to the motion now, moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. Whereas the municipality of Brighton is a welcoming and inclusive community, and whereas the, count, and whereas the council has declared June as Pride Month in the municipality of Brighton, and whereas the municipality of Brighton flies the Pride flag at the municipal center in recognition of Pride Month, and whereas the municipality of Brighton has painted a bench on Main Street in the rainbow theme, now therefore be it resolved that council directs staff to identify crosswalks in the municipality of Brighton that could be designated for painting in the rainbow theme, and further that council authorize staff to proceed with painting at least one sidewalk in the municipality in 2021. Is there any discussion? Councillor Andrew. It's great that uh, we're doing this. Can we uh, make sure that it covers off the future years somehow, or do we need to bring this motion each year and be late getting it? I am very regret that it's uh, late in the month, but uh, it's never too late to recognize this and uh, I'm glad we're doing it, uh, but could, can this read some other way to uh, make sure we're covering off future dates? So the, the motion does read the staff will report, will, will designate, well, sorry, the staff will identify crosswalks in the municipality. So we would anticipate that staff probably around budget time would advise uh, of different crosswalks for future years. But I'm gonna turn the floor over to Mr. Parkinson who sent me an email late in the day, um, which is, what brings us here to this motion, quite frankly, instead of reading it as a notice, because I understand Mr. Parkinson, you're, you're ready to go with this. So um, I, I ask you to make comments, please. Thank you, through your worship to council. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I spent time on the weekend, toured many other municipalities to look at their layout and their type of paint used. Uh, we've determined the best type of paint uh, that holds up and maintains a vibrant color. We've secured some from a supplier because there's a bit of a short shortage in the industry. So we have some on hold if council so chooses to move ahead tonight. The two crosswalks uh, that kind of come to mind because they're in good locations would be Division Street next to the Royal Bank um, and Main Street. And the second would be the school crossing between the two schools on Terry Fox Drive is what staff would recommend, but we welcome other locations or different ideas. And as far as the sidewalk painting, I perhaps that's best if we open it up to the community for input and determine, you know, because we can get quite creative with sidewalk painting because it, it's, a, you know, it's not gonna receive the traffic of vehicles and whatnot, so it'll hold up much better. So perhaps it could be a little more uh, detailed or artistic, if you will, and uh, produce something that's quite beautiful for the town and, and be easier to maintain as well. So I, I think I think that last line, which reads sidewalk, is intended to read crosswalk. That staff proceed with the painting at least one crosswalk in the municipality of Brighton. Um, and if there were sidewalks to identify, I, I, I guess I'd ask staff to bring that forward at a future time, um, keeping accessibility concerns in mind. I, you know, we don't want uh, to create trip and fall hazards. Councillor Anderson. Um. I appreciate you finding a couple of locations like you did. Uh, I sort of envision uh, the main intersection, I'll call it the main intersection or one of the main intersections at Main Street and uh, Prince Edward uh, would highlight very well, I think, but uh, I'll go with the crowd. Thank you, Mayor. I think you brought up a good point when you said about accessibility, because uh, I think you sh we should check to make sure that, to, especially for those who are legally blind, that you need those crosswalks, that we, we, we make sure that, to, that it's the right colors for them, too. Uh, so is there a rush to get this done by the end of the month, or, or will we have... Um, and who's going to paint it? Um, Preston talked about being creative. Uh, uh, do we have someone that's really handy with a paintbrush uh, that's going to be creative? I think we, I don't think we really have to rush into that. Be, what are we now at the 21st of June? And, it, and it's all the whole month of June. So I don't know. Uh, 
I, I would like to hear what other people have to say, but I, I definitely think that we better check into the fact that the, the colors need to be um, conducive to those who are legally blind that we'll need to cross there. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. Do you have any comment on that? I know other communities certainly have uh, rainbow crosswalks. I assume they're uh, following the uh, AOTA requirements. Director? Uh, just to clarify a couple of points, uh, we, we looked at uh, on Councillor Anderson's point uh, of having it at the main intersection. It receives a lot of turning movements and a lot of traffic, so it wouldn't hold up very well. Yeah. Uh, it would get wore off and there would be quite a bit more maintenance to keep it you know, looking good and, and solid. And as far as the uh, crosswalks, it would contain six, the six colors of the, the pride flag uh, that would string from one side of the street to the other. Uh, the tack plates would still be there for the visually impaired on either side of the street, so that would identify the limits of the crossing. And as far as the artistic and looking, make things a little more beautiful, that was for if we did sidewalks. Uh, some communities out there have done sidewalks and they, get, they do get quite detailed and quite artistic. But uh, as far as the crosswalks go, it would be a simple six uh, lines of cross and it would be our staff that would be painting it. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Uh, thank you, Mayor. If uh, yourself and Council will indulge me a couple of uh, moments, I'd like to kind of maybe take this in a different direction. Um, so if if that's okay, I've, got, I've, I've made some comments, I've written them down so that I don't um, kind of mess up what I want to say. Are you okay with that? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, Councillor Anderson, uh, Councillor LeBlanc, as your motion points out, Brighton is very welcoming and inclusive and as well a very supportive community for everyone who lives, works and plays here. I, along with all of you, supported raising the rainbow flag and I was pleased to work with the DBIA to place a painted rainbow bench on Main Street. This council has on many occasions approved flying many different flags of different colors to ce celebrate and recognize many other groups in our municipality. We have flown the blue flag to support individuals and families who struggle with uh, different levels of autism. We wear purple to recognize violence against women in November, this past February 24th. We were encouraged to wear pink in support of anti-bullying, and yet we have not painted any crosswalk, crosswalks, blue or purple or pink. My comments are not intended to offend or exclude or deny anyone, rather, to support, include, and accept. In light of the tragedy in British Columbia, and that today we are celebrating Indigenous peoples in Canada, I would like Council to consider, as we stand with our neighbours in Alderville and Tyendinaga, and share in their grief, as we remember the 215 young souls that we paint across Walk Orange. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I think that's a, a good initiative also. And I, I would ask maybe that you bring it forward as a, as a motion for um, a future discussion at, a, at another meeting. I, but I do think it's a, also a good initiative. I appreciate that. Uh, any further questions or comments on the motion? Councillor Anderson, you had your hand. Up yeah, I think uh, after hearing uh, Mr. Parkinson comment about uh, the, the other location I suggest that I, I would I'd be happy if uh, we for this year at least do we uh, go ahead with his plan and uh, it sounds like it's something that can be done in a timely manner with what he's the resources he has so I would stick to those two locations if everybody is in agreement. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify, you said that uh, in the last uh, line of this motion, it said sidewalk, but the intent is that there'd be at least one crosswalk. Is that correct? They're crossed. We were I think talking that's the intent of the motion, and if it's okay with the mover and seconder, we'll change the word sidewalk to crosswalk. So I'm content, I'm content to go with whatever uh, crosswalk the staff decides is most appropriate. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Anderson, are you okay changing that sidewalk to crosswalk in that last line? Absolutely, it got past me too. <laughs> Councillor LeBlanc, are you okay with that? I am. And uh, is it too late to make an amendment to this motion? It, it is not. 
Well, being Métis, I like what um, Councillor Elmer Raleigh brought up. And if we were going to paint two crosswalks, it would be to change it to paint one orange. I, I would, I, I, and again, I like what Councillor Raleigh said. I would just caution that if we're going to go down this road, we should probably consult with Staff. our friends at Alderville First Nation before we do that. Yes. I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we want to be sensitive, but we don't want to, uh, we don't want to overstep our bounds either because, uh, you know, our friends in the Mississauga Nation might say, we don't want you to, we don't want an orange crosswalk. That's not, that's not what yeah, okay. we're doing. I agree. I agree. Go for it. Like, I, I don't know. But, um, so yeah. I, I, I look for, I, I do want to have the conversation and I look forward to a notice of motion coming forward so that we can then incorporate in that notice of motion, um, uh, an opportunity to engage in dialogue with, with our First Nations partners about uh, such an initiative. I agree. Thank you. Councilor Tadman. Thank you. Could I suggest that we just do one crosswalk for now? Uh, it sounds like, uh, and I, I absolutely support what Councilor Rowley said uh, and, and Councilor LeBlanc and and I understand, Mayor, that we, we need to talk to, to the, our, our friends first about that. But this could get uh, a, quite a colorful town if uh, all the different things that we fly flag, flags for we're going to start gaining. So I think we better step back and um, think this through before we, before we go any farther than this. Thank you, Councilor Kevin. The motion uh, reads now at least one crosswalk in the municipality. Uh, is that still the intent of the mover? I would like to see what we've talked about here. I like this, you know, it's one or two, uh, you know, I don't know why we're discussing that. I think one at one in the part of the west part of town and one uh, by the high school uh, sounds excellent. So I like to leave it the way it was. If somebody wants to change it, then they'll have to figure out another way, another way of doing that. Well, right now it's your motion. If you're not willing to allow for a friendly amendment, someone would have to put a motion to amend the motion on the floor. I like the motion to remain as it is. Thank you, Councilor Tadman. Well, since I can't amend it's their motion, I certainly would like to uh, um, present a motion anyways, that it just be one uh, crosswalk for now. And okay. that's not to offend anybody. It's just that I think we, this has come to us really quickly and we've, we're making a decision, but I think we, as you said, Mayor, we need to talk to our people that we honor at every, every meeting to see if that's something that they, they would like to see happen. But to, you know, there could be other groups that would like another color somewhere else. And, and I, think, I think we've got to stop and think this through. So I would just say one for now. And I think the high school's at, uh, crossing down by uh, the King Edward Park is perfect. So may I ask what? Just hang on for a second, please. So, Councillor Tadman, uh, your motion would read that council amend the motion to read that council authorized staff to proceed with painting one crosswalk in the municipality in 2021. Yeah, right. and maybe, Mayor, if you don't mind, till, till um, staff brings back a report, um, and how we were going to how we are going to move forward because already we have a great suggestion about the painting another one orange so i think um i think we need to pause here and and think this through and further the staff provide a report on crosswalk painting and okay. sidewalks too, and sidewalks as far as that goes, that's what it started out partly to do with. Crosswalk and sidewalk painting. So that's moved by Councillor Tadman. Is there a seconder for the amendment? I like the second one. That's Councillor Rowley. Has a May seconder? I make a 
Okay. Also. You have to make a, sorry, hang on. You have to make a comment on the amending motion. Though. Oh, all right. And then I'll come back. I'll circle back to the full motion. Okay. If, if that's what you prefer to comment on. Yep. So the amending motion is that council authorized staff that we would we would amend the motion to read that council authorized staff to proceed with painting one crosswalk in the municipality in 2021 and further staff to provide a report on crosswalk and sidewalk painting. So, Mayor, if there's a motion on the table that yeah. you don't like, you can say I'm going to put another motion in. Uh, no, Councilor Anderson, you can say I'd like to amend the motion. And you put a motion to amend the motion on the floor. And as long as that motion to amend the motion doesn't negate the original motion, which this doesn't, it just changes something. It just removes the words at least to the word. One word. Floor. One word. Two words, and then adds and adds a request for a report. So, yeah, but, but any member of council may put a, put an amending motion on the floor for any motion, except except the procedural motion. Which so is, we're delaying this because of one. So if I pull, if I re, if I decide to pull my motion, you, we can go and go wait for a report to come back in a couple of weeks, and uh, no, at this stage, tell me how it works. Well, at this stage, if you were to pull your motion, we would simply lose the motion off the agenda and we would have to start again with a notice of motion at the next meeting. Of course. Council is just asking for an amending motion. There, we haven't it, amended the motion yet. Council could defeat the amendment. I, I know, it's just, this is just a matter of opinion anyhow. I, I'm remaining with my motion because I think, think so, it's the so, 21st of June, we have been delayed on this. It's unfortunate it's taken us a while to get it to council, right. but and so, I'm glad we expedited it tonight. So, and but I'll anybody, stick with my motion. Anybody on council who wants to stick with the original motion should vote against the amending motion. Anyone on council who wants the motion to be amended to put one sidewalk should vote in favor of the amending motion. Matt? Mayor. Matt, go ahead. That one sidewalk is to be still be painted before the end of June, correct? Yes. Well, okay. in, uh, all it says is 2021. All this currently says is 2021, but Mr. Parkinson has told us he's ready to go. But right now, regardless of what we do, it's by the end of 2021. Deputy Mayor? And I understand this is an amending motion, but uh, should it say that to paint one sidewalk in the rainbow theme or just to be clear, or is that needed? No, because we're only amending the last line in the original motion. The second last line in the original motion does mention the rainbow theme. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment? Councillor Bates. I'm in favor of this. Just so, to be clear, you're really just inserting the part about bringing the report back on future sidewalks for what Councillor Rowley had brought up or any other that might come forward, correct? Well, you're do, we're doing two yeah. things in this. We're, we're removing the words at least one so that yeah. we're, we're, staff have identified two crosswalks, yeah. which I think they were prepared to paint. And we're, we're reducing that to one sidewalk. So then staff would have to um, just paint one sidewalk. We're not telling them which one that they've identified. So um, that, that may require an amendment as well if, if we wanna give that direction. Or, or we could just leave it to staff to pick the, the one that they believe is the best one for this particular yeah. purpose. Yeah. And we're adding the request for a report. I was just gonna say, I took it as just one anyways. I, I don't wanna speak for the director. I think he was just talking about two options that they were gonna choose the best one of, so yeah. Very well, I, yeah. The, the, the motion reads at least one. Yeah. Would be, yeah. you know, so are we leaving it open to the, uh, to, uh, excuse me, Mayor, uh, are we leaving this open to Mr. Preston's decision to put it uh, where he feels that it's most appropriate and works for him? That's a discussion. I think, yes, so that's a discussion we can have once we get back to the main motion after we've dealt with the amendment that's on the floor right now. Because that I'll agree with. So the amending motion is on the floor. Councilor Tadman, do you have something to say or shall I call the vote? I would love you to call the vote. <laughs> I was just going to suggest that maybe you would. 
Go ahead, Madam Clerk, please call the vote. On the amendment. Also, so this is for the amending motion. The amending Council motion. Ron, Councilor Ron Anderson? No. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? No. It's carried. Thank you. So now we return to the original motion as amended. And so it would read, um, it would read as written with the words as amended based on the amendment that we've just received. So asking for a report, now removing the words at least in the last line. It's moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. Is there any further discussion? Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Could we just uh, add to this motion that uh, that staff, uh, the preference, uh, the logical place that uh, staff would would like to do this one uh, crosswalk for no, this time since there's such a big hurry. Mr. Parkinson, do we really we need to sit down now and debate that for another hour? I don't. I don't think we we do. I think most of council seemed um, comfortable with letting staff make the decision. So can we just add, I'd like to just add this to the, the whole motion and, and let's get on with some other parts of the meeting. It is in the motion, isn't it? I can, I, there's, there's, no, there's nothing to add. If we're letting staff make the decision for the Jesus. one process, there's nothing to add. We can just carry on. Staff have their direction. They'll choose where it goes and we'll see a rainbow sidewalk before too long. Is there any further discussion on the amended motion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And it's carried. Thank you. Uh, Ticket number 11, unfinished business. There is no unfinished business on the agenda. There are no bylaws on the agenda, which takes us to reports of advisory committees of council, reports and minutes and council reports. The first motion before me is that council adopt the minutes of April 9th, 2021 and May 14th, 2021 accessibility advisory committee meeting as presented. And that council directs staff to procure a live, a live captioning service for streamed council and committee meetings. And the council directs staff to establish an accessibility review procedure for subdivisions and new municipal developments. Is there a mover? Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Is there any discussion? Deputy Mayor? Um, yeah, I, I noticed that we did have uh, these meetings being captioned, and I mean, it was a big joke because it wasn't that great, but. That is the nature of captioning sometimes. Is that not something that we can just turn off and on or, or are we looking for something something different? Is this motion looking for something different? Madam Clerk? Can Tom speak to this? I don't know. Deputy Clerk? Uh, yes, I can uh, speak to that a little bit. Um, basically the uh, internal Zoom um, application that captions is um is not the greatest um as some of you noticed um there was a lot of mistakes and i mean that's part of the nature of live captioning as the deputy mayor noted um but there are some other options out there that um reportedly have higher percentages of uh accuracy um and, the, and so this was brought to the uh, Accessibility Advisory Committee um, um, as, a, as a discussion because although we're not required to caption, um, it's a service that the Accessibility Advisory Committee felt was um, something that we should provide. So um, basically this would uh, 
push me to look into this further and find the best option. I know there's there's basically two ways you can go about it, which is one is live captioning and the other is um, where you send it in after the fact and then upload the captioned uh, video. So that's all I have for that. <laughs> So with, with this direction, um, would we receive a report back on the functionality of uh, whatever was being considered before the procurement? Is that for me, sir? Um, I guess that's for anyone who could answer it, Tom. Okay. Um, yeah, the, um, it's not super expensive, to be honest. A couple of services that I found, one was $20 a month. Um, and then the other is, I think um a dollar 25 per minute when you send it in so in either case it's not that uh much of a it's not a big budget item really we're not talking about uh, life-changing money no councillor tadman yeah and i think uh, uh tom tom is very capable of, of getting us you know the best advice we can to help us with this and the reason it was brought up is be because of those people that have hearing impairment that they they have the words there for them so i i would assume that there is whatever you do because i have no idea what tom's going to do to get that print across that that screen but i am sure he'll do a good job at it. and and it's a service that we should give to those who are hearing impaired and there's young children that are are hearing impaired and it would, it's very good for them to be able to, to access that. I don't know how many young children watch council meetings, but. Uh, any, no, any but in other areas. So if we, if, you right. know, if that's a start, so if they can be helped at school in other areas too. I don't suppose even adults much. I don't know what are, how many people uh, come, to, come to these meetings, but I sure as heck, if I wasn't on council, wouldn't be sitting here all night. Yeah, and my, my question comes from a place of having um, been involved in software procurement before and losing my stomach over the price. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's uh, um, as reasonable as Mr. Street just mentioned. Deputy Mayor? Sure, I just wanted to mention that it's important, I think, that we do this. Um, I am curious, a little off topic, but not if we're going to make this decision, are we going to continue to live stream our meetings even after when we're able to meet again? Is this something we will continue to do? I think that's the intention, Madam Clerk. Yes. All right, so it makes sense to find a system that works in my mind. Yes. Thank you. Anything further? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. That's carried. Thank you. That takes us to the Heritage Advisory Committee minutes, which reads that Council will adopt the minutes of the April 6, 2021. Heritage Advisory Committee meeting as presented. Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by. Councillor Rowley, any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And that's carried. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to the Economic Development Advisory Committee minutes with a motion that Council adopt the minutes of the April 1st, 2021 Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting as presented. Is there a move? Council Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Rowley. And discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? 
Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you. That takes us to our consent agenda. If there's any item in the consent agenda that a member of council would like debated separately, please advise me and we will remove it from the list. Councilor Rowley. Um, I don't really want to pull anything out separately to debate. May I ask a question of our uh, Lower Trent Conservation representatives? You may after I read the motion. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So the motion reads, be it resolved the staff recommendation with respect to consent agenda 14.1 to 14.4 be adopted as printed is the remover. Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc. Councillor Rowley, your question. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, just wondering if our uh, representatives at Lower Trent have um, any information or any collaboration remarks regarding the gypsy moth situation as it is. The what? The gypsy moth situation is the, is the question being asked. Uh, Councillors Tadman or Bateman, any comment? Councillor Tadman? It was discussed, but uh, it's very costly to spray, and that's the only way that um, it can be handled. And I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor, that they have done part of um, oh, the woods, the woods that step uh, Coburg Way. What's it called? Yep. They've sprayed that area, the woodland there. The forest. The yes. Anyways, uh, uh, but they are, uh, you know, pleading with the province and, and it's going to be a big cost for each municipality to spray too, even if the province chips in. So um, it, there's people in our municipality that are suffering with this gypsy moth yeah. and the uh, it does, it, it, it's a horrible thing, but um, I, there's, there's no money at Lower Trent to do that kind of spring and there's no, no cooperation at this point from the province to throw monies towards it. And I don't know how much our municipality is willing to do to help the residents that are suffering through this. So that answers the question, Councillor Rowley. I will quickly comment on the county forest, which is that the county is not spraying in the county forest. Where did they spray then? There was some place up there. It was in our report. The Ganaraska? Maybe. Yeah. I, I think it was the Ganaraska Conservation. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to mention, Mayor, if I can, I, uh, I am not to driving on highways in the evening until I have my eyes operated on. and. Uh, my daughter was coming to pick me up after the meeting and I thought I'd be longer than what I was. So I walked out to the highway and I couldn't believe that the actual, they were, they were falling on my head as I'm walking down the road. And I could, I had to tiptoe not to squish them all just right there at Lower Trent. So there must be an awful invasion north of the 401. Yeah, I, think the I see the director of finance is shaking her head. So she may know of an area by her too. The, the, the comments I'm receiving from, from our citizens uh, indicate to me that the further north in Brighton you get, the worse it gets. And, and I, I think there's people in Brighton that are gonna lose, lose woodlots. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's concerning, but we just don't have the resources in our small municipality to be able to manage. Um, this level of, of, as you say, invasion, because it is an invasive species. And at this stage, I, my understanding is it's too late to spray anyway, that they're, they're about to- Probably, uh, yeah. yeah. They're about to go into the, the cocooning mode. Anything further on the five, four items in front of us? Councilor Bateman? You're muted, Mark. Mm -hmm. Just under the DBI, uh, Councilor Rowley might might have been ready to speak to it. Uh, there was in there that they had speaking notes that was going to be brought forward with their concern on the uh, downtown, possible downtown location of the cannabis facility. I, I don't know if she wants to speak to what was said at the meeting or. 
Um, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of discussion, um, Councillor Bateman, around that. Uh, and we haven't heard any more as to whether it will go down, and um, really, there's not a whole lot uh, that we can do about it. I I guess I would say that um, the general kind of comment from the DBIA would be they would rather it not be right on Main Street. Uh, however, we don't get to pick and choose who puts what business where. Anything further from members of council? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Raleigh? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Link? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And that's carried. We have no reports or minutes of statutory committees, boards, or external agencies, which takes us to correspondence, direction items, endorsements, communications, and petitions. Uh, and before us is the correspondence that was discussed from Ms. Daituoglo. The motion before me reads that council support or receive, so we'll need to know which one, Correspondence from Hannah Haituoglo and ENSS Class of 2021 to provide permission to use bandstand in Memorial Park and to allow a prom parade. Is there a mover? Councilor Rowley, are we supporting or receiving? I would like to support. I'll second it. Thank you. It was moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor Anderson. And um, Councilor Rowley, it's your motion, but would we want to refer this to staff? I, I think that would be a good idea. I think um, with our <coughs> closures and I'm sure Jim Miller would know exactly what needs to go on in the park, but Parker, uh, Mr. Mr. Parkinson would know about the road closures that we direct staff to, um, yes, communicate with the students involved. And What I've written, Council Rowley, is and refer to staff to engage with the student team to assist in organizing these events. Yes. Does that work? That works for me. All right. Does that work for you, Councillor Anderson, as the seconder? This is a bottom line that does, depending on the uh, time frame or the date that this would be held, uh, they mentioned possibly three sessions or split yeah. it up. Hang on. I'm, I'm, I was asking if you're okay with the addition, as, as noted, as the seconder. Oh, it's got nothing to do with meeting the state. Well, All I'm asking right now is are you okay <laughs> with the addition that we just made to the motion? Okay. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now you may now you may offer your debating remarks, sir. No, no debate. Just uh, if it if it could be included that uh, we meet they meet the uh, health board regulations or the standard or whatever the uh, the rule of the day is at that particular, you know, if it's August, great, uh, but it must meet the, uh, the uh, for, you know, how many people can attend and all those types of things. All right. I suggest that by referring it to staff, we're guaranteeing that because staff will follow the public health protocols. But do, do you want to include that as part of the motion, Councilor Rowley? Well, I don't like to assume anything, but I, I, I know that they'll do a good job. So we'll leave it at that. Okay. Are you yeah. okay leaving, leaving it? Okay. Councilor Bateman? And I assume when uh, staff looks into it, that'll be engaging the police force as well, or the police services, because I, I know as well as uh, Councilor Tadman, what she was referring to earlier, when somebody wanted to do a drive-by, I think it was uh, an engagement drive-by, they were told by the OPP that anybody that participated would be fine. So we'd want to make sure because they said they had approval from the fire department and the spoke to somebody at the municipality, but then the OPP put a kibosh on it with the threat of fines. So I want to make sure they're on board because it doesn't really matter if everybody else is, if they're going to hand out tickets. 
Mike, Chief Smith, yeah. can I ask if uh, you'll communicate with the inspector and make sure the OPP is on board if we go down the road of a, of a parade? Chief Smith is nodding his head yes. Yes, Your Worship. Thank we'll you. We'll be uh, working with uh, uh, Mr. Parkinson on that. And the OPP, correct? Correct. Yeah, thank you. Councilor Tadman. Mayor, could we put the word direction under the direction of staff instead of, I, I can't remember what was there. Because the staff already know that any anything that it, um, they have to organize that to, where there's gonna be a crowd of people, they know they have to get in touch with the OPP and the fire department and the health unit sometimes have an ambulance present, the whole works. So, under the directions of staff so that to, the students know that they have to follow the rules that staff has made up. Councillor Rowley, you okay with adding the words under municipal staff direction as part of that motion? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Anderson as the seconder. Are you okay with adding those words? I'm okay with that, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this uh, going forward under the direction of staff. I just want to make sure um, that they know that um, I, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. Uh, we can say yes to this, but, but really it's going to go with the flow as, as far as what is going on out there. And having even a group of 50, that's 50 students, but then there's this, the people that have come to watch as well. And that's what we have to be careful of, setting a limit of just, you know, two, two people per graduate or, you know what I mean? And, and I'm not, that, that's for staff to figure out or, well, I mean, staff shouldn't have to figure out. All they have to do is tell them how many are allowed, right? But uh, I just want to make sure that uh, us agreeing to this is we're not agreeing to anything that's going to not follow the rules and that us agreeing to us doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, unfortunately, because with everything we're planning, we all know we're all in committees and wondering how to plan things and we can't plan things because uh, we're not sure what the rules are going to be in a month from now. So I just want to make that very clear. I'm all for this, but it doesn't mean necessarily that uh, it's actually going to happen. I would, I would agree 100% and I don't, I think the motion is, is clear in that regard that if staff have to say, um, sorry, sorry, folks, we can't run this event. That's the end. I mean, that's that's the that's the way it has to be, and that's the reality of the world we live in today, unfortunately. Um, Councilor Rowley, you had your hand. I, I don't need to speak. Thank you, Councilor LeBlanc. Yes, uh, I gladly support this uh, through mayor through you, but today when I was at my um, vaccination for my second shot. There was at least five to six hundred people there, so there was there wasn't a limitation of ten or fifty that was placed on anybody. But uh, the second point is, are we going to be checking with the um, the school board to make sure that they're going to give up the, the diplomas for this? We're not going to step on their toes in any way. Uh, we we won't be stepping on any toes at all. A anything organized would be organized by the student team. So if there's okay. something to be given out, it'll be given to me or whomever is there to give out. And I doubt it will be official diplomas. It'll probably be um, faux, faux diplomas for, for pictures to be taken, I imagine. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor? You're muted. No, I'm good, sorry. Okay. I, I think Mr. Miller had something to say. Yeah, I see that. Mr. Miller? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, point out that we do have a uh, park use application that I would be giving uh, to these to the ladies to uh, fill out, which has all the particulars uh, for their event, and then uh, a permit is is uh, given to them once everything is is, is checked out. So and there is, is there a process. A, is there a fee for that, Mr. Uh, normally, there isn't, unless there's uh, unless there's you know, staff resources or uh, municipal resources used. Thank you. Councillor LeBlanc? Yes, um, with the, the two young uh, uh, students and uh, future leaders, they were mentioning about using a slide, uh, a slide projector for showing the films and also sound system and mics. Don't we already have that already there that they can use our equipment? 
instead of them bringing their own? Yeah, I, we, we do, and we can let Mr. Miller communicate that to them, and they can make the decision whether they want to bring their own or use ours. Okay, thank you. Councilor Rowley. Thank you. May I make an amendment to my motion? You're the mover, uh, so sure. Yes, you may. That if if uh, the students are successful in obtaining all of the permits that we re they require, I know they'll have to do with Mr. Parkinson and the county for road closures if we use Highway 2, that any fees could be waived. Good point. And further that fees be waived for these events? That work, Councillor Anderson as the seconder. Is that okay with you? All right. Yeah. Thank you. Right on. That's good. Further, dis further discussion, Councillor Tadden. Thank you, Mayor. You know the one uh, thing that I'm looking at this, and it's sixteen point one, right? That we're dealing with now. Correct. It kind of limits the students to one place to provide permission to use bandstand in Memorial Park. But what if that doesn't work, but somewhere else would work? I'm sure they would still want to do it somewhere else. So the way we're uh, supporting this is only for the bandstand. Um, well, if we want to make it wide open, I guess we could just say use of a municipal park. I think that would be better. Councilor Rowley as the mover, are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Are you writing a novel there? Uh, it's going to look like a dog's breakfast, Madam Clerk, just so you know. We may have to have a conversation. <laughs> I think they're talking about bringing their own chairs and everything, so that sort of lends itself to uh, the need for the park and the washrooms and all those things. But if they were to, for example, um, decide that they need to use King Edward Park, there are washrooms yeah. there as well, and they could still bring their own. So this just opens up possibilities and opportunities to discuss other options for the students uh, with for Mr. Miller. Uh, so that now reads the last line, 2021 to provide permission to use a municipal park and to allow prom parade and then all of the other additions. I'll read the whole thing again before I call the vote. Go ahead, Councillor Tadman. I'm running out of ink, just so you know. I, I'm not amending or doing anything <laughs> else, but I'm, the, I'm just, uh, uh, and I shouldn't be directing staff, but I think this is one of those times as, as very intelligent and well presented tonight that the two young girls did. Um, I w and uh, not to make fun of them, but we, the only sheriff in this town, I think, died. <laughs> and so, um, you know, maybe I could make a suggestion, and I don't want it as a motion, but that that both the, the director of public works and the rec, director of uh, parks and rec meet with those two girls to begin with and, and help them through, because this is a lot to take on for two students who do not know how governments are run, especially our government to begin with and i i maybe they'll do that anyways but i i hope that that happens so that so that they can be guided through this i think that's a fair comment and i think staff will um meet with them certainly the second the first portion of the amendment reads that staff are to engage with the student team yeah so that's sure that's part of that. yep anyone else so I will re-read the motion and then I will call the vote. Moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor Anderson. The Council support correspondence from Hannah Hytuoglo and, and the ENSS class of 2021 to provide permission to use a municipal park and to allow a prom parade. I refer to staff to engage with the student team to assist in organizing these events under municipal staff direction and further that fees be waived for these events. Any further discussion? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman. Yes. 
Councillor Doug Gabal? Yes. Councillor Emily Rally. Yes, and I wish the girls good luck with pulling this off. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And that's carried. Thank you. We have no FYI correspondence this evening. Uh, Madam Clerk, are you aware of anyone coming to us with a question for question period? I haven't received any emails. Thank you. It takes us to our motion to proceed into closed session. And once I read the motion and, and assuming that it's passed, we will uh, take a 10 minute recess before uh, rejoining each other on the closed session Zoom link. The motion reads that council resolve itself into closed session June 21st, 2021 at 8.44 p.m. pursuant to the Ontario Municipal Act 2001 as amended, subsection 239-2B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal and local board employees, various advisory committee appointments and the CAO performance review, and K, a position plan procedure criteria or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board, specifically recreation concept. Is there a move? Wait a minute, Madam Clerk, you go first. Can you take out the item, various ad advisory committee's appointments that's been striked from the uh, agenda? Thank you. So before I ask for a mover or seconder, I would note that the words various advisory committee appointments from the first bullet point has been removed from the motion. Is there a mover? Councillor Rowley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink. Is there any discussion? Members of council, please unmute yourselves. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Austin? Yes. Thank you. We will reconvene in closed session. We